Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33, 3. Who would you say you were? Uh, I didn't say. I oh. Just, I just introduced the program. <laughs> I am, however, Reverend Kendall Hetrick, and on my left is Reverend Bob Butler. Um, you can just call us Kendall and Bob, and that'll be just fine. Yes. And uh, because we get we get we get along pretty well that way. Uh, we are have for a long time. <laughs> right. We are both ordained ministers of the gospel and have been for a while. We're not novices. So uh, we're coming to you with the Great and Mighty Things program, out of, based out of Jeremiah thirty-three three. And uh, we have been sharing with you for the last little bit. Um, th if you've been watching consistently through the summer, we've had some reruns of some, some prior programs that were dealing with Covenant. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are picking back up with the series that we've been running now for forever. Uh, started in, see, what this is 18, 16 we started. Okay. Uh, which is born again. Now what? Uh, Okay, you've accepted Jesus Christ. You are now a Christian. Uh, where do you go from there? Um, and to a certain degree, that will be based upon what God's calling upon your life is. However, there are certain basic general principles uh, that all of us walk in. And then after that basic general principles, God deals with us specifically as to who we're to minister to, where we're to minister, what's going on uh, in our life and our ministry. And so we, uh, we have to follow the leading of the Spirit. Basically, that I mean, that we could just say, well, after you're born again, you follow the God's leading by the Spirit, and and you'd be all right. But there's also an, an opportunity for teaching and training and and interaction with other ministers. And so there's a lot of things that that it entails. So get your Bibles and join in with us as we do a little recap on the, the covenants, and then. Progress on that's into an, the other. That, that's an excellent overview. Good. <laughs> it is. It really is because, uh, and we've said this before since we started this particular series that when you become born again, you're back to ground zero. Everything from there on mm -hmm. is new in the spirit realm in your life. Yep. And and uh, so I, I put together some thoughts to to talk about, and one of them was the fact that we. We did reruns through the summer like we've done other times. Uh, that was eight weeks. And uh, that, <clears throat> I should say, those covenants that we talked about in that series of those eight programs started in Genesis. And it included a lot of small covenants that God made for Israel and, and even before Israel was Israel. <laughs> yes. And uh, those as far as I know, could still be very valid for those people. Mm -hmm. Now, when we get to the end of that, uh, we picked up the covenant that we live in. Now, in between that time and the covenant we live in now, we did also did a covenant on marriage, which is totally different than, than what we'd been talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Born Again Now What, all of those covenants that we talked about in those in those programs is valid for somebody. <laughs> but most of those, if you're Born Again Now What, are not for you. Okay. We've stepped into the new and better covenant between God and Jesus and mankind, which we've talked about in Galatians. Uh, primarily Galatians, you also mentioned, and uh, Ephesians has a lot, has a lot to do with... Uh, How we live our lives. Yes. Now, um, now our new covenant builds on all those other covenants. We, yes. We talk at times about God has God is a God of progressive revelation. Yes. He started out with with this covenant and this covenant, and and there are there are parts of it that carry on through even to today, and yes. yet um, th there are parts which while they they still are valid depending upon the the family or the group that it was given to, and, and that specifically to them. But today, we have been given, as it says in Hebrews and a lot of other places, we've been given a better covenant established on better promises because it is based not on, on, the, on, on sacrifices, the blood of bulls and goats, it says, but it's based on Jesus, who was the final, ultimate, perfect, now, wonderful sacrifice. A couple scriptures that we, that we put in there for that was 
Hebrews 8, 6 deals with mm -hmm. it, and Hebrews 12, 24. If you want to write those down and go look them up and read about them and ask God to, to reveal what they mean to you. Well, we know that what it says, it says that, you know, this blood covenant was made mm -hmm. with a blood sacrifice to make it legal and binding forever and ever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Jesus was the only one that fit the bill to do that. Yes. Uh, humankind could not do that. Uh, and he had to become humankind, become eligible on that side of the fence mm -hmm. for God saying, okay, now we've got everything in line to bring this to pass. Mm -hmm. And you and I and everybody else who's a true born again Christian, we live under the, under the authority of that covenant mm -hmm. and the blessings that we have available to us because of that covenant. Now that's that's where we've been, and uh, what we do today will also go to the website uh, when we get through, and it gets all edited and processed and everything. Uh, we will stick it on with the other ones. Mm -hmm. Born again, now what? Yes. Uh, I might throw this out just because uh, we've had more responses from our website on the teaching of the word that you and I have been doing for years and years than we ever did on TV alone. And to me, that is an important thing. <laughs> so uh, we don't just come up here and sit and to entertain ourselves. We come up here to bless you people out there, to teach mm -hmm. you something. Uh, well, uh, again, we, we, we only reach a certain group, small audience. Let me see fairly large audience with the television program. 500,000 uh, households. <laughs> but but in relation to what what we can reach through um, the internet, oh yes. Um, it, it is it is very small. So proportional wise, uh, we're almost up to the, the number of TV 500,000 households <laughs> on on the website. Yeah. So and we've only been on air for a couple, two or three years. I don't remember when we started that, but uh, okay. Um uh, so, born again now, what? And we're gonna we're just we're gonna do a little reviewing on this program just to bring everybody up speed. And a lot of you people watching for the first time never heard what we said to start with. Mm -hmm. So we we are are attempting to give you some plan of action on what you're going to be doing since you're now born again. And and here's mm -hmm. this wide open scope of what's available yes. and what you need to get available that we talked about. Reading the Word, well, uh, I suggested the book of John. Somebody else said Ephesians, and I think we both agreed that Galatians has a lot to say about the covenant before it was became a covenant. Mm -hmm. God and Jesus talked, and it was written down. And, and uh, well, it's like when you uh, have a, you have a will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and to, the people have to get together with the will to know what's going to be in the will. Mm -hmm. What's this will going to accomplish? Well, you could say uh, the covenant we're talking about is the same as the will. Mm -hmm. It's the will between God and Jesus for us. And, and in that will uh, is everything. Yep. Nothing left out. Makes it available to us. That's available to us. And well, which, is, which is one of the advantages. Um, if, if you're just getting caught up to this program, whether it's on, on, the, on the web, uh, or whether it is on the television program, you can go to the website or to YouTube and you can find these past programs which are archived oh, yeah. there. And uh, so you can, if we say something that uh, maybe that we don't get covered fully, you can go back and, and look at the past ones and see if we dealt with it. And if not, uh, and there's something that you have got a question about, at the end of every program, we We're give available. you a the contact information, uh, the contact right. information is on the website. So uh, emails, you know, e everybody yeah. does emails. So give us, get you know, where what we would um, welcome your getting in contact with us. Yes, and I might throw this in that uh, since we've been on the website, uh, we've had a lot more, uh, what you could call personal comment, personal communication, because we have had some people come back and ask questions with the emails. Mm -hmm. uh, that we never had through TV for some reason. I don't. I don't understand all that. But uh, we've had more activity since we've been on the website. And uh, like you said, you can 
You can go back and watch any of them we've done because we stuck them on there under that same heading. Now, uh, one of the things, well, let's see, I got two things I'm going here. Uh, we have been discussing steps for the new believer going back, born again now, what's for the first time. Uh, for the first time when you become born again, one of the things you need to do because, uh, okay, why do we need to do it? Mm -hmm. You need to get in and read the Bible, and that's where I said the book of John. I, I suggest mm -hmm. it. Uh, traditionally, the, the Baptist people say, well, after you get born again, go read the book of John. Mm -hmm. and read it very carefully. Well, I agree with that. I think that's an excellent. Kendall says read Ephesians. Well, there's a lot of good stuff in Ephesians. Well, I say start in Ephesians. Start. You need to read the whole book. Yes. All uh, 66 we're... of them compile one book, and, and it's, uh, it, depending on your, on your reading skill and ability, you can go through and, and the thing fairly handily in a year. And the whole book. The, the, whole, the whole Bible, yeah, yeah. from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, you can go through the thing pretty pretty simply uh, within a year. Now, when you get done with that, start over. And, and you might find some things that you need to read over. <laughs> yes, uh, you know. Uh, now that's this this is over and above your normal study, uh, where you're looking for a particular scripture uh, on yeah. a particular uh, yeah. topic. Uh, whether you're looking for uh, you know. For, for an answer for yourself or for someone else or whether you're dealing with a Bible study, uh, you need to just immerse yourself, like we do, in the book or by electronic media. But but the, the book is pretty nice because you can go slow with it. Now, one of the advantages of electronic media is is you can go to like Bible Gateway and, and there's I think five different translations that it will read it to you. <laughs> uh, so if you can't read, you have no excuse to not knowing what it says. That's, that's you could probably good. by following the by following the scripture and hearing it read to you, you could probably learn how to read if you need that. Well, it happened to other Christians. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, that part of that part of what you just said is is part of our leading them to. Mm -hmm. To get involved with the word. Yes. Uh, and and well, I don't want to jump ahead, but I got a comment about that. But uh, a lot of people, because of becoming Christians, they have certain things going on in their life. It may be health issue, maybe finances. Mm -hmm. God book has an answer for all of them. Yes. No exceptions. Mm -hmm. All of them. Now, there's where your private study and your concordance and. And and looking up other ministries that maybe maybe their specialty is talking about finances. We we know of right. some that that's all they talk about is mm -hmm. finances, yep. money. And but <laughs> but with them, God is the source of all that, not your banks, mm -hmm. not your not your savings and loan. None of, none of those things really. Uh, God can use them right. to bless you with finances, but they're not the author of it. Well, the same thing is true. Uh, again, you know, there are people that deal specifically with finances. There are people that deal specifically with marriage. People yes. that deal with other things, but uh, and, and they are resources that are that are there and that are available. But it ultimately comes back down to the fact. Uh, one of the ways that we set is is your horizontal relationships are never going to be better than your vertical relationships. <laughs> That's right. You'll never have a better relationship with people, especially other Christians, than you have with God. And and if you're if you're vertical, if you're having horizontal problems, it's because you're vertical. You got a problem vertically. You're not going to step up to a new level in Christianity without stepping up, mm -hmm. like you just said. Uh, and, and you tied it back one day to attitude and altitude. Mm -hmm. uh, if if your attitude is, well, I'm I'm a born again Christian now, I'm going to heaven, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 set. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says, and we've said it. You say it all the time. You know, progressive revelation. Yes. Now, back in 2012, God had us a, a start a series where we talked about intimacy with Jesus, your Savior. Mm -hmm. And then after we got going on that, he said, now don't just limit it to Jesus, but include the whole Godhead. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I need to get a drink. The, uh, the, the, the way that, that it works 
is um, so intertwined mm -hmm. because as as you as you see something here, then it will build back. Well, Bob uses the 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 uh, picture puzzle. I like that analogy a lot. You 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 get a couple of pieces in. And then you can begin to see how the other pieces begin to fit and form, especially once you get to border. Well, <laughs> that's kind of what we're doing now is trying to help you establish a border so that you can get the rest of it filled in. And, and as he said, it's a progressive revelation. Uh, one of the things that it is impossible to do uh, is to take the second step until you've taken the first one. It won't happen. You, you you know you you just can't, you can't do, do that. that. You've got to you've got to, and, and there there's several different instances in Scripture where God says basically, uh, until you've got this foundation built and you're solid in this foundation, you're not going to uh, you're not going to go beyond that because God wants you to be solid and not building out here and then seeing it collapse and then have to rebuild. And, just to, just to build a strong spiritual base to live on. Yep. Uh, and that's what he's talking about. That's what that's what's important. It was important for us to get firmly entrenched mm -hmm. in the Word of God before we could start looking at other things. Right. Before God called you and said, "Oh, Kendall, I want you to be in the ministry now. I want you to go teach and and evangelize and do all these other things." You couldn't do that till you had this base established. Right. And and, and for same with you, God may have something. Well, we know that God has something special for you to do. And it's not going to happen until you get the spiritual base. Right. And, and Kendall has reminded everybody that's been watching our TV programs for how many years? Yes. 87. Uh, here, here again, you can't tell people, oh, I mean, everybody's got an opinion. Uh, opinions <laughs> free, are free dime, right. dime a dozen. But you can't be telling people, well, the Bible says thus and so, if you don't know that the Bible says Thus, Thus and, and so, <laughs> and and you need so you need to know what the Bible says. You need to know what God's idea and opinion is on a, any particular subject, and the only way to do that is to get in it and study it. Go to church, hear it ministered, fellowship with 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 like-minded believers. Yes, talk a, talk about it, interact with other Christians, and say, "Hey, I've just been reading this. Have you, have you ever read this? Have you ever studied this?" And uh, I just got back from, from our annual convocation and, and we were interviewing a candidate. And once the candidate left, I, I asked the, the people that were there, I said, did you ever uh, study into this? And I quoted a couple of scriptures. I said, did you ever look into this, re the relationship between these two? And, and the one guy was, is a professor at Oral Roberts University. He said, yeah, he said, I have. That's the course I teach. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> Along that line, uh, Mary and I have been going to a church up in Coralville. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's one that we like. It fits us. It fits us. We fit them. And uh, recently, and we've been going there for a while now, but just recently, an older couple, more towards our age, wanted wanted to fellowship with us. Okay. So they said, "Well, we need to get together sometime after church and have a, you know, have a sit down, have a meal, and have some talk." Mm -hmm. So last Sunday, that opportunity actually materialized, okay. and we went to their house, and uh, she had a nice meal for us. We were there till five o'clock. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was for lunch, and and you will find people that are interested in you and what you know. And want to talk to you, mm -hmm. and likewise, you can find out what they know. Maybe they know something. Maybe they've studied something you haven't quite got to yet. Okay. Uh, this is where the fellowship of believers, like-minded believers, both of you can grow from each other yes. by by just associating and talking. And mm -hmm. and I'm sure the Bible. Well, with us, the Bible got involved right away because mm. I'm outspoken that way. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, I know you are too, so don't try and deny it. <laughs> uh, we've been talking primarily about learning the basic stuff. Yes. Uh, and, and you and I know that Hebrews chapter 5, verse, what is it, 20 to 6? 11, one through, 11 through 6, 3. Okay, so you already know what I'm talking about. I, I, know, what you're, I know where you're headed. Well, Jesus... When he ministered to his 12 disciples, mm -hmm. 
there were, was it six, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There were six doctrines. We'll call it doctrines because he called it doctrine. Mm -hmm. And it's his doctrine, so it better be right. <laughs> yeah. We know it's right. Six doctrines there that he taught his 12 disciples, and he said, these are foundational doctrines that you need to have solid in Amen. your faith beliefs. I like to call it revelation knowledge of God's absolute truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now that's more than just revelation of something. Yeah. Um, I worked in engineering. I, I had some education. So I had some revelation knowledge of some truths, but they weren't God's. Mm -hmm. They were natural. Yeah. We're talking about the spiritual, which also connects to the natural. Yes. Now, we can inject this, that, and we did before for the new people, you have to realize that when you got born again, it wasn't all just natural, just your flesh and mm -hmm. your soul. And, you know, there's you through three part being, mm -hmm. and and before you got born again, you were still a three part being. Only your three part being back then was not in tune with God. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we we study this out in Romans. <laughs> The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Mm -hmm. And and Jesus said, these six doctrines, you need to learn them and get them so solid that they're part of you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can throw healing in here. Yeah, We've exactly. taught on healing several different times in the past. Mm -hmm. And healing is a big one because healing affects everybody somewhere along the line. Yes, it does. Well, uh, one day in prayer, God threw this tidbit out. He says, now, what we're telling you to do is believe what this word says. Mm -hmm. And that's part of your revelation knowledge. And when that revelation knowledge becomes so solid in you, you believe that verse or verses that you're standing on. And mm -hmm. God said, believe and confess until you know and possess. Mm -hmm. Knowing is intimacy, which we talked about starting in 2012. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you have the intimacy of what you've been believing for, you possess it. Mm -hmm. So that's where that little tidbit comes in fine for you when you're studying and reading and, and learning from everybody that can teach you the truth. You can gain faster than the time that we did. I think the opportunities mm -hmm. to grow faster is, is available now more so than than my wife and I did. Oh, definitely. So here's an opportunity for you to build this foundation we've been talking about faster and more accurate because it has to be truth so that God can use you ministering to other people. Right. As, as we say, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. It's been invented. <laughs> it's already it, it, around. <laughs> invent something else, you know, or, or find a way to use that wheel. the wheel. Or <laughs> yes. or levers or whatever or screws, you know. Um, the same thing is true in the scripture. There, now, now there are things that will become fresh to you um, because it, th this is a living word. It's not just static. And um, oh gosh, seventy three to now, however many years that is, you know, for, forty odd years that I've been studying and wearing out Bibles, and I still find things <laughs> that, <didn't> know. <laughs> that, that, that come together um, in, in fresh ways. Yes. Uh, and, and, and you look at something and you say, well, gee, I've never, uh, there's a particular place just recently that, that I see how Jesus ministered to somebody, and, and I said, gee, I have never done that. I may need to be open to that because I think it's something that, that may be coming Generally, when God is teaching you something along, uh, along a particular line, it's to prepare you for something that's coming. To get yes. You, uh, if it's not something that you're already in, then it's something that you're going to, to, to encounter as you go along. Uh, and, and hopefully, after you begin to get established again in these basics and your foundation is laid, then God will begin to minister to you uh, a particular area and to get you strong in it and, and have you ready because a situation is coming along uh, that you will need that. That's one of the wonderful things about the foreknowledge of God and, and, and this omnipotent, uh, uh, omnipresent person that we, we, we are part of, that 
um, he he knows what's coming. It says that he knows the end from the beginning. Yep, helpful to me. And, and he knows everything in between. <laughs> I love that. And, and so he's able to prepare us and get us uh, to a place. Uh, 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 oh, gee, I wouldn't have any idea the times that God has brought me back through um, not just in, in my daily reading, uh, but in my... In, not only do you have daily reading, but you have daily studying, which is separate than your daily reading. Um, and and so many times I'll I'll be reading along, and and a particular verse will 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 just it, we call it pop, you know, or 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 illuminate. So some people said it just glows, you know. Mm -hmm. But and, and and so the the spirit will quicken this particular scripture to you, and within a day or two, while it's still fresh and you're you're meditating on it, uh, a situation will come up. And, ah, that's why I have that. I want to use you as an example on something. Okay. And, and I'm going to back up a little bit. Uh, I remember when you started out studying to have be a blacksmith. Okay. Uh, Kendall is a bona fide, qualified blacksmith. Right. Uh, but he didn't get there overnight. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I was with, now, I'm going to use this as an example to what we're talking to about spiritual things. Okay. To get to that point where you could make something with your blacksmithing tools as it took you a while to accumulate all the stuff that you need to do it correctly. Mm -hmm. But in that time, you were also studying and learning the natural science, if you will. Mm -hmm. You borrowed one of my metallurgy books and studied it from front to back more than once yes. to find out when this metal gets hot, what happens? What's going on in there? <laughs> mm -hmm. Something's going on. Yeah. And, and Lot of it's the on. same way with you studying this word. There's something in there that you need. Yes. And the only way you get it is to stick with it, like Kendall did with this learning is is what he needed to know to become a qualified blacksmith. Mm -hmm. And and I will tell you, he did, and he has, and he is today. He's a qualified blacksmith. Mm -hmm. We saw a program just recently, and they had a qualified blacksmith guy on there interviewed him, and he was telling what I'm telling you telling them on you. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't just start out overnight doing that. Mm -hmm. And now he's made things very unique in, in that artwork because mm -hmm. blacksmithing is, is in the, falls under artwork in, in a sense because yeah. it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's unique yeah. most of the time. Now mm -hmm. it may follow general terms of something you're making, but it has its own uniqueness. Mm -hmm. You have your own uniqueness as a, as a child of God. Amen. And, and the more you study this word, the more revelation knowledge of God's absolute truth you get, the more qualified you become to go out and be an evangelist or whatever else God calls you to do. The, to, the, mm -hmm. That thing that Kendall says, only God, you can do with God. Yeah. And I like the analogy of, of that because it points out when, when you started out there, uh, you didn't jump in and say, well, I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. No, you said, okay, I've heard that before, so there must be something significant in that that I need to have as part of me. Mm -hmm. He can strike a match and get his stuff going and, and be doing good stuff with it without having to go back and rehash. Well, let's see, how do I do that again? You know, I didn't have to rediscover fire. <laughs> point, case in point. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do with you now in this born again now what mm -hmm. is is take care of that now what get get in here and, and find out the we're going to read i'm going to have you read uh, hebrews 5 and 6 and we'll kick that off for the next program the six doctrines that jesus called his doctrines mm -hmm. and and touch a little bit on i know you did a whole teaching on that called transitionatory justification which someday you're going to redo and put on video yes that's a face statement on my part yes well, <laughs> Because I know how busy he is. <laughs> yeah, but find, find me a little time here somewhere. Of whom we have many things to say. This is Hebrews, the fifth chapter, the 11th verse. Of whom we have many things to say, and this is talking about Melchizedek here, and hard to be uttered, seeing you're dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to those who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. 
Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on under perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And verse 3 says, And this will we do if God permit. Now, tune in again next time, and we will start out talk about those. Amen.